The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 84 Discussing Shine Spark. I have to agree, Gerardo muttered once all three were dry and seated in the room, about Shine Spark. I noticed her doing some things myself I had previously associated with Erenby, and now wonder if they extend to Olsosons. Well, he closed his eyes. Except Nimwick. Him, I don't understand. Go on, Maple offered, curled in a bed with starlight huddled against her for warmth. Though the mountain air carried a pleasant warmth drifting up from the jungle, the hotel's all-stone architecture conducted heat well and freely drained any they had to offer into the core of the mountain. Well, Gerardo strummed his talons along the floor, suit drying behind him. It was in her manner of conveying information. She said a great deal, much of which we didn't need to know, some of which we possibly shouldn't have known, and every bit of it was said such that it felt she was imparting some deep secret as if she trusted us deeply, or wanted us to feel that way and trust her in return. Maple nodded. Now that you mention it, Ernby did always talk like he was telling secrets. He did, Gerardo agreed and doing so can be a very effective strategy, both before and after your audience catches on. It's difficult to hold it against them when they truly do tell useful things, yet one can't even be sure why they do it. Is it to obscure the existence of real secrets, or to provide cover should something truly sensitive come out by mistake, for us to be desensitized to it? Starlight blinked and furrowed her brow. What? Pretending to tell us a lot of secrets makes us want to trust ponies like Shine Spark and Arenby, Maple explained, and makes it so we don't wonder what they're not telling us. Right? That's the gist of it, Gerardo answered, strumming again and looking toward his crate. That said, what we should take from it is completely up in the air. That she has something to hide? Who doesn't? I know I have my share of secrets I would fight tooth and claw to keep from seeing daylight. Perhaps Sosa is merely that way in general for some reason or another, or perhaps Erenby and Shinespark knew each other in times past, and she picked up on his mannerisms. Who can say? We were wondering earlier why Shinespark was on that cart, Maple said, adjusting her hooves beneath her. She didn't have a title or apparently a job, but it sounded like she and Valet knew each other. We thought she might be Dorable's daughter. What do you think about that? Gerardo shrugged. You may be on the right track. Given what we just discussed, however, I can't think of another pony perhaps more suited to be her sire. Maple's eyes widened. You mean, indeed. Shifting himself, Gerardo stretched his wings and lay them out so as better to dry. I also observed that the stallion Nimwick was supposedly in training to become a factory chief alongside Dorable. It isn't impossible that our yellow benefactor was once one of the leaders of Sosa himself. Starlight said Ernby said Sosa was a stallion-dominated society, Maple said with a growing look of self-confidence as her brain put the pieces together. What if he left her behind, but because she's a mare, she can't have his old job, but she still knows how to do it, so she's tagging along while they find someone else to do it? Do you think that could be it? Assuming Susan's societal roles are hereditary, it is a good bet, Gerardo answered, rubbing two talents together. All we know for sure is that she told me to meet her on the northern bank of the river at... He frowned and hung his head. Alas, I can't seem to remember the names they used for their factories. I know she had one. Most unfortunate. However, that brings us to the next topic. You want your sword back, Maple sighed. And we're going to have to go to Sosa to get it. We may have to do even more, Gerardo sadly corrected, considering she wished to discuss some sort of payment, and I have no goods to offer. I imagine she has a service in mind instead, and those take time. More importantly, however, I'm concerned by her apparent certainty that she could recover my weapon, as well as the speed and deliberateness with which it was stolen. Few honorable warriors would keep their foes' weapons a prize for a battle they retreated from. Well, those were thieves and bandits, Maple pointed out. But are you saying she knows a way to talk to them and make sure she gets it back? That she might be working with them? 
It would make sense from multiple angles. Shrugging, Gerardo elaborated. She was armed, yet reluctant to fend off their attack save for when it showed signs of turning lethal. If she is, in fact, effectively cheated out of a high title due to her gender, she may harbor resentment against the existing system for that and wish to undermine it. And we know for sure she has something to hide. Well, Maple exhaled heavily. Does it matter? You're still going to try to get your sword. I'm aware that this seems shady business, but once we clear this job, we will have few possessions save for our lives and my payment, and I doubt the former will be in danger. At least, that is my hope. They did seem very reluctant to take lives during that skirmish. Maple looked carefully at him. But we're not Sosans. What if they need us to do something risky without breaking their own code of honor? A risk will have to take, Gerardo said, a slight awkwardness to his voice. And what about your reward for this delivery, Maple pressed? How would you keep that safe? Wouldn't it be just as valuable to you as these crates were lugging around? What about that? Gerardo smiled. Well, you do seem to possess a very useful way of storing objects. Maple reached and looked at her flank. Yes, indeed, Gerardo said. The utility of that brand of yours has already spared us from needing a bag carrier. I'm very curious to know the full extent of what it can contain, though from the trinkets you've stored so far, I doubt my reward will be of much trouble. Well, as best as I can explain, Maple took a deep breath, I haven't found any specific thing it can't store, though I haven't tried a lot. There's a total size limit at the size of my body, and as I approach it, it just gets harder to carry things until I start dropping them when I lose concentration. And the weight of things I'm carrying is added to my own. Gerardo's eyebrows both rose. Really? Mm-hmm. Maple nodded. I actually carry ballast most of the time. It takes up room, but it makes me heavier. She closed her eyes. And stronger, as a result. It's like those sailors back when the boats ran who would put iron gauntlets around their hulls just to make themselves used to living with them, so when they needed to move cargo, they could take them off and be able to carry all that extra weight with ease. I've never fought anyone, and I hope I never have to, but uh, she sighed. I've wanted to go on an adventure my whole life, even if I never really thought it would happen. This is what I still did to prepare. Starlight shifted away, suddenly uncomfortable. You what? They're just a few old iron ingots, Maple said with a shrug. And don't worry, I always take them off before bed so I don't wear the bed out or crush you by accident. I'm very careful. Sighing in relief, Starlight wriggled closer again. Gerardo's curiosity, however, remained. Most interesting. I can't say I would have guessed that, observing you before. It's not something I showed off, Maple answered. Like I said, the point is to be able to do it and have everything stay normal. And remember, I still don't know how to fight. Nevertheless, this could be a considerable tactical advantage, Gerardo breathed, thinking. Maple shrugged and settled her chin onto the bed. If you want something that could really be a tactical advantage, just this morning I learned that my cutie mark can store magic. More and more interesting, Gerardo continued. I presume testing the precise functionality of that is in order? Perhaps now that we have some downtime? I do want to find out how it works, Maple agreed, nodding. I'm still not sure what we're doing now, though. I just want to enjoy the city, and I think Starlight wants to sleep. Gerardo continued his thought, then suddenly stopped, an idea lighting his eyes. As an aside, he glanced at Starlight, staring without looking directly at her. Have you tried pocketing her? Maple flinched hard. I don't really want to. I still haven't forgotten what happened last time I had another pony inside me. Instantly, Gerardo backed away, holding a talent to his chest. My sincerest apologies. I... He hung his head. Admittedly, I did not remember myself. But that is most understandable. Sorry, Maple sniffed. I might need a minute, if you don't mind. Of course. Turning away, Gerardo paced towards the room door and settled in wait. Take your time. I'll be right here whenever it comes time to discuss our plans going forward. End of chapter 84